Welcome back to the exclusive series about the all-new X12. In this video, we will show you more details from the prototype car. Thank you for joining us. Once we had our 3D printed model verified and first prototypes of the front end tested, we had a clear idea what to do next. Martin had integrated all of our early feedback and prepared our first full prototype early in the spring of this year. The main focus was on the front end. We had different designs of the carbon arms, stiffer, softer and with different shapes and materials. In the end, we had three different designs with the version Max, Hupo, Drew and I preferred, making it into final production. We also had to decide whether to use a 3mm or 4mm kingpin for the front suspension. Another area we focused on was the reliability of the all-new center pivot mounting system. We wanted to be sure it would be tweak-free in all the different racing conditions so we put some serious abuse on the cars. Unfortunately, the COVID situation put great restrictions on the testing and made everything more complicated for us. But we worked around it by renting the halls for private testing. I was lucky to be able to do a few test sessions in the UK, completely privately, by renting a permanent indoor facility. Max Kuning, Cooper Honegal and Drew Ellis also had the possibility to do some private test sessions with these prototypes. During the first few sessions, I spent a lot of time testing between the 3mm and 4mm front kingpin. At first, we were concerned about the durability of a 3mm design with built-in camber, especially because we had opted for no upper brace or arm. However, we found a big improvement in handling and reliability going to a 4mm kingpin because of the ability to use a bigger bore front spring. The bigger diameter spring transformed the car, giving it more grip and feeling more forgiving. The handling benefits were the main reason for why we decided to go with the 4mm Kingpin for 2021. We also had the idea to introduce a different Ackerman position by using a more rearward hole on the steering block. This had to be tested on the track as well. And it also raised some concerns about the fitment of the parts, including steering link lengths. I think we all felt positive about the testing at this point. I was also excited about the strong performance of the new center pivot, which is considered the heart of a 12 scale car. We were very pleased with the durability, which from our testing was a noticeable step forward from the old car. The center pivot mounting system was working exceptionally well. It was evident that, at least for EU conditions, the lower roll center proved beneficial for the handling. The center pivot remained tweak-free, no matter how hard I crashed, and the adjustability, both with height, using shims, and the forward and rearward positions had good effects on the handling. We felt that moving the pivot forward by two millimeter gave the car more grip and made it more stable, whereas the rearward in-line position gave the most steering. It was a no-brainer to incorporate this unique feature into the kit, a decision that was made early on. The rear pod, bulkheads and upper carbon plate worked very well for the duration of the testing, and we felt no additional changes were necessary. We were very satisfied with the ease of build, tweak-free design, and the ease of adjustments thanks to the eccentric rear axle inserts being brought back in use. Definitely, we loved them from the first minute of tests. They improved the handling and the added adjustability was great. By removing screws in three different points, it allows for several stiffness settings in the kit without the need for purchasing additional parts or doing any modifications. 
plus, the side braces make the car look techy and aggressive. There were concerns about the friction between the kingpin and the steering block. We tried polishing the kingpin to reduce friction, but we also had some other ideas in mind. There was also a concern about fitting the rearward hole on the steering block with certain smaller diameter wheels. This had to be addressed for maximum compatibility with different wheels on the market, with both kit Ackerman positions. The steering block had been molded in the special graphite composite material to reduce friction, but we had to ensure that it had perfect tolerance with minimum play and minimum friction. The first pivot ball prototypes for the front arms also had too much play, which had to be fixed for the final version. We wanted a solid front end with no slop and perfect consistency throughout. We had to make sure that the design for the servo now being mounted directly to the chassis with two wheelbase settings and two Ackerman settings would be compatible with all types of servo sizes available on the market. After mounting all different Ackerman, wheelbase and servo settings, we could ensure that we had maximum compatibility. Thanks to everyone involved, we were able to make quick decisions and design changes based on the on-track feedback. From the first until the last prototype of the car, we have basically continued to work and fine-tune individual parts only. At the very end, when all parts were finalized, X-Ray produced a final pre-production car so we could verify all the final details. That was early in September. Luckily, everything fit together perfectly and exactly like we wanted. Looking at the result and final product, I feel immensely satisfied. Within a truly short time frame, I believe that we have made a great kit that is almost 90% new. It's by far the best X12 kit that we have made so far. It is strong, easy to work on, eye-pleasing, and most of all, faster than the old car. I hope that both our racing team and our customers will enjoy this new X12 2021, and I hope that we can achieve the race results that it deserves. In the next final video, I will show you the new car and all the new features. Stay tuned.